Yeah. So again, go back and check out Mike Trout's mechanical breakdown. It was volume 36 on the lab Epstein hitting podcast YouTube page. Subscribe to that and subscribe, of course, Apple, Google, Spotify, whichever platform you may be listening on and leave a review. We greatly appreciate that. I say that a lot, but we really do appreciate that. And you can email us too, Jimbo podcast 21 at gmail.com. Yeah. Mike Trout's quote on simplicity it got me thinking. I was watching film this week of a couple of prospects who were drafted in the first round up last year. Zach Nito of the Angels, Brooks Lee of the Twins. I want to ask you a question as it pertains to them and what they do, not necessarily those two guys. But my takeaway and analysis, watching both guys on film, they both have flaws at the plate in their swing that could hamper their future success. But with Lee, I'm watching him, and I see a swing that is more simple. Right With Nito, he has this huge load. By the way, Lee's a switch hitter. Nito's a right-handed batter, but Nito has this huge load, this huge leg kick. He sometimes gets very long with his swing. So full context, just to give you some power numbers as it pertains to both guys. Nito, he slugged 476 last year. Lee slugged 451. So they're pretty much in the same range, right? They both had five home runs in their professional debuts. But my point is player development is really hard. For those who don't know, it's not just easy. Yes. It's not an easy thing to create players. It's not an easy thing to create prospects. It's not. It's no walk in the park trying to develop professional baseball players who you hope are going to be future major leaguers and contribute to your team when your team is in the postseason. You've got hitting coordinators, pitching coordinators, a bunch of coaches, different ideas, opinions, egos, everything. If you have these two type hitters, not necessarily Nito or Lee, but those two guys, same position, shortstop, different mechanics and swings. Do you think I can make the argument that you'd want to take the guy with the simple mechanics, the simplicity in his swing, in this case, Lee, than the other guy? Because you have a lot of money invested in these two first rounders, millions of dollars. And with more complicated mechanics comes that messiness that if one of those guys struggles and happens to be the guy with the mechanics that. Uh, he's got the big leg kick. He's got a lot going on in his swing. I don't know. As a player development department, you, you, you kind of want to shy away from that, no? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would agree with you. I, I don't know if, <clears throat> excuse me, style and rhythm would scare me, mm -hmm. meaning a big leg kick. Things that scare me happen typically from the front foot landing to extension. If there's something in there that, is risky that's risky to change if it's a leg kick or rhythm you know if they get going early enough then they're usually going to be okay you know if they if they start their load on time if they get their foot down on time and, and how that relates to every player is totally different but that i wouldn't be as concerned about the risk but if there was some kind of hand issue or elbow issue that i've had a lot of experience with being difficult to change then that would definitely set up a red flag of maybe we don't risk three to five million dollars on this player. Now, that's just one part of the equation. If I see this player consistently and this player squares up baseballs consistently, even with a swing that's kind of funky, um, maybe it doesn't matter. You know, some guys square up more balls than others. You know, I mean, look at Mike Piazza. I mean, that swing was look like a golf swing you know it looks so long and he squared stuff up high low in out you know that's why he was a 60 second round draft pick right I mean the dude wasn't a great catcher he wasn't a, a great hitter he had some power but it didn't look right and then he shocked the world right you know by a guy that can slow his heart rate down he had good vision no moment was too big for him and he found barrels so that to me Sometimes you can have a great swing and I could watch a player take 15, 20 at bats. And if they just don't find a barrel, then there's something in there, whether it's stress, um, whether they're trying to do too much, whether their thought process or their approach is off, that doesn't matter. Even though the swing, I've had players with just fantastic swings and mechanically correct swings and good rhythm, and they don't perform um, because there are other variables out there. And I don't care how good you are. If you, or get stressed out and you try to do too much in games, then great things. I mean, Josh Donaldson right now is a perfect example of that. Not that his whole career has been like that, but he got a lot of pressure on him. You know, people are booing him and he's trying to prove that he's worth, you know, what they paid for him. He's worth to be a Yankee and this and that. 
and it's it's eating them up a little bit and that's that's hard so yeah long answer to a, a really simple question um yes if there was a, a steep mechanical issue in there that i've had experience with trouble fixing then i probably would pass on that player unless yeah. they did something extraordinary in another field yeah i'm glad you Short mentioned I'm glad you mentioned mike piazza will be breaking down his swing another mechanical breakdown series gold edition in a few weeks i can't wait to do that one because he was taught hitting by the one and only ted williams really yeah you didn't know that no i didn't know they that. worked together oh. i see a lot of ted williams swing in piazza yeah a little bit 